It's the 185th Humberside Derby today, so Scrum Down brings you a Good Friday Rugby League special from the Boulevard. Rivalry as intense as ever on whole sporting occasion of the year, but the early birds and the robins have flocked together as always to see which bird is crying loudest. Well, on paper, Hull should win. Their remarkable transformation has taken them way up the league, and while the faint championship dream was snuffed out by Wigan at the weekend, they'll be looking to consolidate a top four challenge against a Rovers side that sadly seems doomed to relegation. But form counts for nothing in Derby games, and if Rovers could win today, it would give them perhaps even greater pleasure than usual. But their demise does sadden heroes of the past. It's a, it's a tragic blow because you're going to miss the likes of people seeing the, the Martin of Fires, blistering pace, and people coming in like Jonathan Davis who just coming into the game. And uh, I think we'll miss all that. It's terrible for the city if uh, they go down. Uh, you know, oh, both sides doing well, and uh, the town does well. Simple as that, John. It doesn't do the city any good at all. I mean, we need we need two major clubs. I mean, we see that in the attendances and, and, and all the good things which come with rugby league, uh, you know, develops around, you know, a few half a dozen clubs in uh, Wigan and Leeds and, and people like this and Hull and Olkinson Rovers. Hull are going for a league double today, having won by 15 points to 12 at Craven Park in January. Gary Devorty was there to chase a loose ball through. The actual try score was Australian David Moon. Well, Hull got further points on the board with a, another Australian involved, Craig Coleman, following through there to get the touchdown. But the scores were actually level at half-time. Then Welshman Gary Pearce put Book to ball. Towering drop goal. Hull were in front, and at the final whistle, it was total jubilation for Hull FC. Well, nine years ago, of course, the two sides went to Wembley for the Challenge Cup final, and the greatest moment in his career for the one and only Clive Sullivan, who played in 28 derby games, 18 for Hull, 10 for Rovers. What a proud man Clive would be today as Sam Tony makes a derby debut. Anthony, you watched your father play in many a derby game, but what's it like for you now facing your first one as a player? Well, I'm very nervous, of course, but uh, I hope that we can win. That's really what I've come here to do. Yeah, but it's uh, perhaps the biggest day of your life so far. Up to now in my career, yeah. yeah definitely. And Sullivan isn't the only player experiencing the rare atmosphere of the Humberside Derby for the first time. Graham Hallis standing in for the injured George Fairbairn at fullback. Steve Robinson, a recent £25,000 signing from Halifax. Prop forward Colin Armstrong, who came from Carlisle a few weeks ago. And former Featherston man Paul Lyman all started Derby game for the first time. And now our caption isn't wrong. David Bishop is wearing the number 14 shirt. Although he's starting the game, he's superstitious about wearing number 13. Andy Thompson has that one. He's on the bench. Well, much could depend on Wayne Parker, the halfback, who's just come back to the side after a long injury layoff. David Watkins. He's a good playmaker, a most effective link between backs and forwards. He's a good kicker from the hand and an excellent drop kicker. Landon won in both his previous derby appearances at the Boulevard. An opportunist whose potential has been stifled by Hull Kingston Rovers' lack of success this season. No selection problems for Brian Smith, and every one of Hull's starting lineup has played in a derby. Indeed, he even has the luxury of being able to recall Paul Eastwood to the right wing position. Eastwood was a frequent scorer in the first half of the season until he was sidelined through injury. And another in outstanding form for them this season has been fullback Paul Fletcher. His positional play is of the highest order, in keeping with good fullbacks. His attacking skills are never more evident than when running the ball out of defence to a broken field and is always quick to lend support to his three quarters. Has a lethal sidestep which deceives the best of defences. He's been an influential member of a well-organised and successful Hull side. Well, because this is a holiday programme, there have been three matches this evening, and we'll have the highlights from the other matches involving the title race. There's Leeds against Bradford Northern at Henningley and Castleford against Featherston Rovers at Weldon Road. And at kick-off time, I can tell you that it is extremely blustery here at the Boulevard. But I think the wind is a cross one, so it might not affect the players badly as it would have done if it had been blind from one end to the other. Hockingston Rovers, of course, in the red and white. Hull in black and white. 
and, uh, David alongside me. Considerable speculation here on Humberside this morning about Gavin Miller, the Australian loose forward. He's out injured, but there is talk that he might well be going to Wigan next season. Well, that would be a sad loss, obviously, to Hawkins and Rovers. They've obviously had a, a troublesome season, and the loss of a class player like Gavin Miller most certainly won't help their cause in any way or form. Now, Miller has been one of the few players in Hull KR's disappointing season who's played well. And the referee is Jerry Kershaw from Easingworld for the second successive of the match on scrum down. We had him at Odd Sort for the Bradford Witness game last Sunday. Windley, oh, change of direction by Windley, did well there, and gives it back inside for Dannett, and Dannett finds support too. Lee Jackson acting half-back, long line is Gary Pearce, now his kicking could be a very influential factor today, but a good pick-up here by fullback Graham Hallis, who was playing instead of George Fairburn in that position. Well, the record over the years has just gone Hull's way. They've won 91 of the derby matches against Hull KR's 83, 10 of them drawn. And Hull have also won more games here on their own ground against the old enemy. Well, Hull's coach, Brian Smith, is a very shrewd tactician and he's built himself a crow's nest here at the Boulevard so he can watch the play from a higher level. Very intelligent thing to do. And this is the view that Brian Smith has of the game and it just shows that uh, he is a very very astute coach indeed Bishop backing down in the loose forward position which might be a surprise to some people in Wales of course uh, there's a half back down and Paul Fletcher the first really good running moment of the match and the penalty awarded against Bishop here for not allowing Fletcher up at the play the ball just a, a word about that, the fact that Bishop is uh, playing at loose forward, are you surprised at that? Not at all, really. I mean, he is a very good footballer, he's a strong lad as well, and I think he probably will get more involved in the game. But having a speech about hanging on in tackles, that is coming too frequent in our game, and it's got to be stopped. Now, a real roar of expectancy for the first time from the Hull fans, because Hull are camped just outside the Hull Kingston Rovers try line. And you can see there how close they are to it. And it looks as though they'll swing the ball right with Danat, who will be held up. <laughs> he might be a big, strong fellow, but there was no way through that little posse. Now Windley, and it looks as though the game's first try has been scored for Hull. Despite the tackle, Gary Pearce is the man. And that's the first time, really, they've threatened the Robins line and they get four points due reward. Well, indiscipline cost them this. Halm got up right in five yards from the line. A short pass out to Pierce, straight running, took him over. A good start for Halm. Looks simple enough. And it is to a kicker of the calibre of the try scorer and the goal kicker. Gary Pearce, Hull lead 6-0. Hull Kingston Rose really have got to use the advantage of the wind in this half. Well, they certainly have. They've got to keep them pinned down there. They've got to move the ball about. It's no good doubling back and just having the one pass, one runner, because that's all it's doing is giving Hull's defence time to, to really get to grips with it. Porter's done well there. There's an Australian who's come over and again found it difficult in a struggling side. But he stayed on to help the cause. Bishop fainted and uh, then tried to wriggle his way through himself. And they've got plenty of men up here. So Emma couldn't squeeze his pass into Robinson. Hull defending well so far. So uh, they might just be stretched here with Lyman, who's good close to the line. 
would do their confidence so much good if they could get some points and will be picks it up and again the initiative is lost Jackson his first really full season only got into the side because Sean Patrick was injured early on and he's really taken full advantage of his opportunity oh and a good ball from Windley it's put down now ironically by Jackson but he's one of the promising young hookers in the game yes he is we were talking about him before when uh, Patrick went out of the game uh, this lad came in and has done so well for them that he's now kept keeping Patrick out and uh, that says much for the young lad and Hulkingston Rovers are making a substitution the one who's gone off is David Laws for Hull Kingston Rovers and Mike Fletcher has the chance here to really bring Rovers back into the game with their first points of the match it's a straight enough kick and very great assistance of the wind here he comes and that looks pretty good up go the flags Hull Kingston Rovers have their first points of the match they still trail though by 6-2 surging run by Richard Price and a fine tackle on him by Bishop but here again another youngster for the future Richard Price he's already in the Great Britain under 21 side and you saw a glimpse of why there now sharp it's hotting up Pierce timing of the pass essential here to plenty of ground well, Richard Price really is one of the most exciting centres in the game. Yes, he is really. He carves out a gap in the defence here. They can't get to him. It's sheer speed and acceleration has now taken him away. Now it's a chase with a cover defence coming over. Bishop is on his heels, grabs him by the collar here and just throws him down. But what a marvellous run out of defence that was. away from Porter then it got away from Windley and it's Dana Hara Dana Hara playing in his 15th successive derby game and his 19th in all has there ever been a better overseas acquisition Good ball, Devorty. Forward. In and out for Rovers. A little bit static in some of their work. Hallis tried to put a spring in it. Hammer. Zouk Emma, the fireman. Oh, play the ball to himself, and uh, it's the first time we've seen that in the game. But Emma's run as well as anyone in the pack. Here's Armstrong. Five minutes to half time. And how Hull Kingston Rovers need a score. Fisher. Oh, that was, well, they were pedestrian again. Windley. Uh, sorry, uh, Robinson took the pass and then put it straight into a pair of hull hands. And so Fletcher as well again. And Blacker keeps the move going and Blacker streaks away. Pursued by three men, flings out the ball to his right. Now Eastwood cuts inside, gives it back. Windley's involved and Jackson and Wilby. This is much better. Dana Hara pops up again and runs back into the tackler. 
that was much better from Hull, and Hull KR now very much on the defensive. It's Hull on the rampage with Crooks squeezing it away, and Dana Hara goes over in the corner. The referee looks to see if the try is good. It is. Hull have their second try. Dana Hara has his sixth try in derby matches, and Hull go further into the lead. Well, Brian Black has been a really good acquisition from Barrow, and he instigated this move. Yeah, sure he is now running, but look at the way he's watching either side. The defence is coming in, he throws at a pass, not particularly good, but because Eastwood was looking for where the ball was to come, he took it, caught the defence napping because they were all going across, comes back inside, still gets the ball away for Windley to pass the ball outside the man. And here we go now, a long pass out again. And this is good linking up Wimbley in a little side shuffle, moves it out. Dana Hara runs hard as he always does, brought down heavily in two tackles here. But what a marvellous run it's already been. It's covered something like 60, 70 yards. And they still have the ball out here, back inside. Now, Devotee goes to go to the open side, switches around and comes back inside here. The prop moves the ball out, and that was good. Jackson passes, missed the man, but Dana Hara again backing up. That's what backing up's all about. What a try. Gary Pierce will do well even to reach the posts with the wind blowing straight at him. Here he comes though. <laughs> well, I think mentally he was probably beaten there before he even kicked it. 10 2 it is. Again, Emma. At least he's not stopped running. to forward pass from Robinson to say the least had to be and there it goes half time at Hull leading by 10 points to 2 and well worthy of that lead yes they'll be rather pleased uh, going in at the half time with the win now in their favour for the second half Hull KR a little pedestrian not playing well at all they must come out second half they must have a better game plan but Hull very pleased with themselves and highly confident that they can now do it so tries for Gary Pierce and Dana Hara. Pierce also kicking a goal. Mike Fletcher just one for Hulkingston Rovers. The players are taking a short break. We'll take one too. Join us after that. <music> Welcome back to the Boulevard. Perfect timing. Hull 10, Hull KR 2, the start of the second half. And Hull with the advantage of the wind in the second half. So in the first half, Hull KR actually took the scrums thanks to David Watkinson, 6-5. And both hookers won one against the head. There were only six penalties given by referee Kershaw, three apiece. And Hull actually made one more error in play than Hull Kingston Rose. A little bit surprising perhaps that. On the other hand, it could be that Hull were slightly more adventurous. First time all I can remember uh, Richard Pratt being involved over there. <laughs> Tony Sullivan there playing the ball. Has had a very quiet first derby game. But it's uh, difficult for the wingers to get involved, of course. And the side is not moving the ball out for them. Yes, they have persisted, Hulke Arling, going down the middle, and they haven't given the opportunity to anybody in the outsides at all. Once more, enterprising play from Fletcher. Again from Sharp, a vastly improved player this season, John Sharp. Now Pierce, over halfway comes Wilby, gets it back inside, and uh, again the impetus maintained as Pierce goes through a gap.
So we're just outside that 25. Devorty, very creative loose forward. That's uh, going to be the handover, and uh, Holkingston Rovers have a man injured as well. good break and Paul Fletcher who scored on his debut on scrum down last season against Bradford Northern has added a bit of enterprise to the Holkingston Rover side in this second half no progress for Robinson not against Steve Brooks he fairly hammers him down Watkinson for Lyman Paul Lyman seems to have got a great greater appetite in this second half certainly see more of the ball Porter and the kick is by Armstrong it oh and a great catch as well by Ahara very difficult in these uh, conditions with the wind swirling around and Fletcher If Price makes room and gets the pass away, again it's O'Hara. Well, Hulkingston Rovers' problems this season have certainly been in defence, and that's an amazing statistic that they've scored more tries than Hull. That bearing in mind, of course, that Hull are up in fifth place in the league table at the start of this game. Hull KR down at the bottom. Again, just underlining Hull Kingston Rovers' problems. While Hull have conceded just 60 tries, Hull Kingston Rovers an amazing 125 conceded. That really does say a lot about their season. Bishop, that was better. A nice little shimmy. Down there, there's a lot of activity on the bench. So rowers are sticking to their task. The touch judge and the referee both saw that there was a knock on there. Bishop looks rather bemused by all that. The referee Kershaw has awarded a penalty against Hull KR. I think I'm a little bemused at exactly what happened there myself. Uh, I couldn't really see what it was. Bishop obviously didn't like it either, but uh, Hull are very grateful and Pierce has put the kick away, but he hasn't, he's missed touch. Yes, and Hallis making the catch. Hallis has moved around uh, this afternoon. He was out of the left wing position when he took that catch, having started the day at full back and then switched into the three quarter line when Andy Thompson came on. Of course, another factor here is that Hull still have both their substitutes fresh on the bench, ready to bring on. That's right, and they've got the advantage of the wind, and if they use that properly, I would think that they must be feeling themselves justly proud now and hoping that they can complete this match with a good win. They still lead by ten points to two. There's been no addition to the score in this second half, but here's Bishop for Hulkingston Rovers. Oh, locking on in the tackle. <laughs> Look at that. That face says it all, doesn't it? Penalty given as well to the visitors who've had a good record here at the Boulevard in recent years. They've won five of the last ten games here. 
the league and drawn one. So these indeed are rare times for Hull Kingston Rovers. Times they'll probably want to forget in future. Watkinson spun away from Dannett. Armstrong it goes in with the shoulder. They really do need a try. Paul Lyman. Well, drop goals are not much good at this stage. Mike Fletcher running straight into uh, Gary Pierce. Who again has done a share of tackling in this match. And Devorty has somehow managed to emerge with the ball. And uh, a penalty awarded against Hulkingster Rose, and it's getting just a little bit scrappy, but Devorty seems to be enjoying it. Yes, uh, well, Hull obviously will be now. Pierce has to make sure he puts this kick away into touch, uh, but it has been scrappy play. The game has dropped down a couple of paces, and it really does need somebody now with some inspiration to lift the game once again. strongly again as Tim will be he seems to have uh, had a new lease of life in the second row under Brian Smith and that's good that's good play and sharp coming up on the shoulder at the right moment and now Wellham Paul Wellham his strength takes him uh, with his three tacklers to within 15 yards of the Hawkingston Rovers line Lee Jackson back inside is Brian Blacker Wellen was coming up inside Blacker as well, hoping for a try scoring pass, I'm sure. Now it's Windley. Good little dummy as well by Crooks, who's hauled back. And on the last tackle, will Hull keep it going? Will they try for a drop goal? Windley kicks through. And oh dear, a knock on there. But uh, Hull have the ball back, and Gary, oh dear, Gary Pierce went. For his second try there, they just melted away from him. And Pierce has his second try, Hull's third try. And Hulkingston Rovers looks dead and buried at that moment. Well, the first time they started putting a bit more commitment here. Just the six play the ball, yeah. He kicks through here. Yeah? The Hull KR defender couldn't get it. Windley was quick enough to get back on it again, and that was good. Now Pierce is watching here. Yeah? He's looking right and left. He's marshalling people right and left. But the defence is not aware of it. Sells the dummy. Makes it easy. Good try. They were really caught cold there. And no wonder they're having a lecture behind the sticks. It appeared they'd won the ball back. Then. Uh, Seem as though they'd knock on. Hull got the ball. Pierce scored the try. And Pierce also kicks the goal, which takes Hull into a 16 points to 2 lead, which should be unassailable. Jackson. So it's beginning to look like a league double for Hull in Brian Smith's first season as coach. And he certainly has proved an excellent acquisition from down under. Oh, he has. He's a good talker, he's a good organiser, and he's really set the Humberside fans buzzing again. And uh, that's exactly what the black and whites wanted. The ball is back in Wellham's hands. Fletcher. Oh, Wilby's pass was an excellent one to Sharp, and John Sharp races for the line. All down by Bishop, who's tackled as well as anybody for Hulk KR today. Windley, Pierce, and Tim Wilby. He's never stopped running. He's really enjoyed himself. He's reveled in this derby match as Tim Wilby. Windley. And there's always danger here for Hulkingston Rovers as Windley playing his first derby game for three years. He 
was pulled down. And I thought Gary Pierce was going to attempt a drop goal there. Paul Fletcher instead wriggles his way through. Ball goes loose, picked up by Richard Price. And Richard Price gets his first ever derby try. And now it's really turning sour for Hull Kingston Rovers. Richard Price's 12th try of the season, he deserves it. Well, uh, Pierce uh, goes to the drop kick for goal, catches the defence flat-footed, but moves a pass out. Again, a dummy goes in. Now, just watch, he sizes it up. Little grubber kick ahead. Defence fails to pick it up. Richard Price does. Leaves everybody behind. And that just about puts the nail in Hulk A.R.'s coffin. Right on the 25. Slightly angled for Pierce, it's swirling it, but it's gone wide. And 20 points to two it is for Hull, and all Hull KR will be concerned about now is not giving away a drubbing to the old enemy. Well, they'll be, they'll be sad about it. Uh, they know themselves they haven't played well. Hull haven't really excelled themselves, but they've done enough to win this match because they've played sensible stuff with good passing and good running. And uh, that's been the difference in the two sides. They really moved it about much better. Yes. Intelligent kick again. And you've got to say that he's used the uh, wind very well this second half, Gary Pierce. Four tries, 56 goals and 12 drop goals now for him this season. But he might have cost £65,000, but under Brian Smith, He's turned out to be a good signing. Yes, they were talking about him before the game and saying how much he's adapted to the game this season. And Brian Smith has had a steady influence on him. He wouldn't train. He's now got him to train hard. And his commitment to the game now is total. And he's starting to show in Hull's performances. And he's certainly used the wind to better effect than Hull Kingston Rovers did. Yes, he has. He's kicked for touch sensibly. He's kicked down the middle of the field. He's turned the defence off on time and time again, and that's given Hull foot in, in the Hull Kingston Rovers half time and time again the second half. Hull's ball. Now then, can they get a fifth try? They'll uh, all be looking for it now. Price, Price, who's just got one, was the first man in that time. O'Hara and Windley again, and now Wilby. I think Wilby deserves a try on his effort today. Yes, he's been marvellous. He's been involved in virtually everything. Tackled, run hard. He's done it all. Sharp's run well too, and Sharp is here once more, eight yards out. And it, well, Hulkingston Rovers are defending desperately, and Gary Pierce goes over, it's a hat-trick. And really, Hulkingston Rovers have accepted the inevitable. Well, they moved the ball again, they put pressure on a Hull KR side, it's lethargic defence, two men coming in for one, no real effort, Gary Pierce's third try. So it's turning into a benefit match almost for the Welshman here. Ten minutes to go, and Gary Pierce, three tries, and two conversions already, trying to kick his third goal here. I think yes is the answer. And it is turning into a rout. Yes, this is out to defence. Eastwood looking now for the... But he knows that the defence can't get to him. The cover is coming across, but he does the sensible thing. He passes, and look, it's a fumble knock-on. It's just about everything there, and an opportunity lost. Uh, Fletcher taking it out of defence. Uh, he doesn't pull on a sidestep here. He just draws the man and put Eastwood clear. The defence can't hold him. Now it's a matter of can he go all the way. He's looking to see if he has any support with him. 
He's looking right up until the last minute. I think perhaps if he did cut inside, he might have done it himself. He objected, put it out to our side. Blacker dropped the pass. An opportunity lost. Pull are actually going to take Gary Pierce off, I think. Which uh, he must have a knock. But well, what a reception he'll get. Gary Pierce with three tries and three goals retires having done his job magnificently. Sullivan. the thought for Hull Kingston Rovers but Hull are approaching their best ever derby win at the Boulevard which was 81 years ago and they're actually playing out the rest of the game with 12 men they haven't replaced Gary Pierce so Devorty, Dannett and Pierce are all staying off and they obviously feel they've done the job on by Fletcher and of course it really would be an irony if Hull Kingston Rovers were to be consigned to the second division today by all teams Hull well that's right it is rather sad but uh, they, they played like a, like a, a doom side uh, they, there's been no sparkle no zip in their play at all a result of which uh, Hull really haven't had to excel themselves but they played good sensible rugby and scored some sparkling tries Watkinson ran straight into referee Kershaw of all people and David Watkinson here who hasn't scored a try for over two years is pretty close to one and Bishop out here and they're trying to get Pratt in I think it's only about the second time in the match I can remember Pratt having the ball in his hands must be a lonely place to be out on the wing and a losing side here's the Paul Fletcher mark two still trying to get it away knock on Hull 26, Hull Kingston Rovers 2. And we've had a full 80 minutes, and it's certainly only the Hull fans who are singing. The Hull Kingston Rovers partisans have stayed to the end, disappointed, dejected though they may be. And contemplating life in Division 2 and trips to places like Runcorn and Keithley and Workington. Fulham is not very palatable for them. Well, no, it isn't. Uh, but as you already said earlier on, that uh, perhaps it's a time now for them to build back up again. Uh, if they then settle down and uh, come out of it straight away, in the, at least they'll know that they have a good future in the first division the year after next. It's all over. And the, the derby match, the 185th Humberside derby, has been won totally by Hull FC. Hull KR troop away to the comfort of their dressing room knowing that it's going to be second division football for them next season but Hull go away knowing that their bid for a home game in the Premiership has been boosted by this result so 26 points to 2